Hey everyone, welcome back here in Munich at the AMS Automotive Evolution Europe Conference. I'm here with Dr. Matthias Preuss, the head of global microfactory technology at Next Ego Mobile, uh, a really interesting young electric vehicle uh, OEM, which has developed quite an interesting microfactory, hyperflexible production strategy. I'm going to take a bit of time. We've heard earlier in the panel from Matthias, but now we're going to talk a little bit more about this strategy. Uh, Matthias, um, you, you've developed this concept and have it in implementation already in Aachen. Can you tell us a little bit more why this is an irrelevant strategy in today's market, when of course we also know the automotive industry traditionally is so dependent on economies of scale. Yeah, we have uh, seen a lot of insights on how the development of the automotive uh, industry is going, what challenges are in front of us. Um, we developed a microfactory concept, um, but we started with developing a product which is differently built to a traditional uh, car. So we designed an aluminium space frame using aluminium profiles, very simple profiles. Um, and from the outside, we're using a polymeric exterior structure which is modular and we attach it to the frame and then we are integrating a lot of uh, components of the shelf but also um, yeah the for example the battery as one module we are integrating as one part of our um, of our smart integration uh, concept and with that one we don't need any press shop or paint shop which is uh, then obviously uh, reducing the investment significantly um, and we can have a much more smaller, more efficient uh, factory concept. Basically only a very small body shop, yeah, which is uh, also highly automated. Then we have an efficient assembly. Um, and around that we are creating a micro factory concept which we are then uh, growing in our production network, decentralized, um, yeah, hopefully in the future, not only in Aachen, but also um, all over the world. Yeah. So clearly as a, a, a strategy that, that has a product uh, that's been engineered, designed uh, with, this, with this flexibility and manufacturing in mind right from the start. Yeah, this is right. So we had right from the start we had in mind that we need a flexible production concept which is adaptable to uh, yeah, future challenges, uh, different markets. It's also something around, uh, yeah, uh, how we say, democratizing um, automotive mobility. Yeah? So the smaller units we can uh, we can uh, attract uh, different countries, uh, different locations um, to build our micro factories and this is also benefiting uh, society and uh, the uh, local economies where we are going. So your, your, your target market and your target volumes are sort of in line with what your flexibility allows as well. I think the number you gave on stage as well was uh, you, know, you would need less to build one of your micro factories than a typical OEM would need to invest in a, in a paint shop alone, for, yeah, for example. That's correct, yeah. So um, let's talk just a little about the internet of production that you've also developed as part of this. So you mentioned on stage starting with something of a blank piece of paper. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to systems, can you tell us a little bit more about how this IT of production really, really what this means? Yeah, so our decentralized growth so decentralized factories require an integration layer of course and this integration layer is a digital one yeah and we are connecting the different factories and we are exchanging the information and uh, this is what we call the internet of production architecture but this is not only limited to the factory itself it's the whole life cycle of the product from engineering all the way to the customer to after sales service um, we create an IT uh, architecture which is covering the whole life cycle of our product of course production is one of the important steps in this but it's one of three so um, the internet of production is not something uh, completely new but it, in the in how we use it this is this is quite unique um, and focusing on production we see that uh, with uh, all these new devices we're seeing uh, uh, on the shop floor from fastening technologies automation uh, we are gathering a lot of data and this is consolidated in our um, Internet of Production architecture, mm -hmm. and then we have some uh, yeah, smart, clever uh, analytics applications we are using then to analyze all this, uh, our processes and to optimize constantly. Exciting. Now, one of the you have a, a existing micro factory in Aachen, uh, and you're looking at uh, locations in Southeast Europe for, for for the next or for another one. Tell us a little bit about why this this location. Yeah, I think um, first of all, um, I spent a lot of time uh, during the last year in uh, Southeast Europe. Uh, with our new uh, micro factory projects. Uh, we see a lot of interest in this region, a lot of uh, reshoring activities from, uh, from basically everywhere in the world. Um, uh, Southeast Europe is especially interesting for, for us as a smaller OEM, mm. 
um, because a lot of infrastructure is already there. A lot of suppliers producing in South East Europe, so you find a lot of uh, well-trained, educated uh, people, workforce. Um, a lot of talent, especially in the digital area, so um, uh, frequently traveling to Sofia. Mm. Sofia is one of the uh, digitalization uh, IT hubs in Europe, uh, very growing uh, city, um, basically attracting all the talents from South East Europe gathering in Sofia. Um, this is the perfect environment for us uh, with our micro factory and our, also our internet of production structure to mm. find the talent. And on the other hand, we see a lot of successful examples operating in Southeast Europe uh, on training people, establishing the supply chain. Um, and of course, it's uh, within inside the EU, especially in Bulgaria, this mm. is uh, helping a lot when it comes to legislative uh, legal uh, questions and uh, building up a uh, factory. Yeah. And, and maybe just a, a short word on, obviously with things like the Inflation Reduction Act, there is uh, obviously questions around where things should be located mm. to supply key markets mm. like the US. Um, how quickly could you, for example, set up something in the US should you decide to do it? Mm. Yeah, so uh, first we see the uh, boundaries uh, by the Inflation Reduction Act, nobody really knows what is coming up uh, during the next years, but we expect this to be uh, staying for quite a while. So uh, when you check the news every day, there is an announcement of new manufacturing sites in the US, either from OEMs or component supplier. Um, so you need a very flexible concept. Um, we can easily adapt our microfactory concept to local supply chain, but also local conditions when it comes to automation, jobs, job creation. Um, we think that this is an also a valid argument uh, to create local value, um, to transfer innovation mm -hmm. um, with each of the micro factories. Especially in the US, there is a, a huge opportunity for us because we can we can build a micro factory from first idea to start of production, maximum two and a half years. Um, and this is, I think, quite unique in the industry. So exciting to watch what happens then now from Southeast Europe to, to, to the US and Asia. Um, we look forward to keeping up with you and, and Next Ego. Uh, the audience, you'll be able to see more and including uh, the panel that Matthias was on and the presentation, sharing more on the strategies for the micro factory and managing production in uncertain times. But for now, I want to thank you so much yeah. for your time and joining us. We really look forward to keeping up with the next steps of your strategy. Thank you for having me. Pleasure.